This episode of Grip Tips is brought to you by Lightbulb Grip. We're back, we're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we take a look at some common hand signals for parking a vehicle. Today's episode is actually a request straight from our sponsors as we learn how to safely guide a vehicle for parking. With as big as some of these trucks can get sometimes with all the gear that's inside, it's good to know a couple of common hand signals that way you can help direct a driver into a spot. Additionally, this is for safety and if anybody knows safety on a set, it's going to be your grip and electrics. The first thing that you want to do is have a quick meeting with the driver and quickly go over these hand signals so that you and the driver are on the same page. So when a truck or a van is backing up, the spotter should put themselves on the driver's side at the back of the vehicle with line of sight straight through the mirror to the driver. The driver should always have their windows rolled down as well so that they can hear the spotter. If the spotter is on the passenger side, the visibility between the driver and the spotter is typically harder to see hand signals and additionally harder to hear for the driver. So always make sure that the spotter is on the same side as the driver. Also, when you're using hand signals for the driver, you want to make sure that you're over exaggerating. Like if I'm telling them to back up, I want to make sure that I'm over exaggerating my movements because I, there's a lot of people who will use their wrist like this and typically you can't see it that well inside of a mirror anyway. So over exaggerating any type of movement that you're trying to do, it helps the driver see you basically. The first hand signal is the horn. Most drivers know to honk the horn before they move in any direction, but if they forget, you can always remind them to honk first. <laughs> this will alert everyone around to pay attention or to back away. You can signal this by making a sideways T and pressing the vertical hand a couple of times. So basically it's, it's kind of like timeout, but really it's like this is the steering wheel, this is the driver pressing the steering wheel. I think you get it by now. Once the driver is honked, generally twice, you can start moving them, in this case, backing up. You want your arms completely horizontal and then start bending at the elbows toward yourself. This is just telling the driver to come on back. Also in backing up, and I think this kind of goes without saying, the spotter should be checking behind the vehicle as the vehicle's in motion to make sure there's no obstructions that might accidentally get hit. Once the vehicle starts getting close to the stopping point, you will raise your arms to your sides and start bringing them together to basically give the driver a gauge as to how far they have left. As they back up, you will bring your arms closer and closer together, and when they finally reach the stopping point, you will make an X out of your forearms. Now crossing your arms like this basically means stop. I think uh, most people know that this means stop, and if you actually bang them together, it means emergency stop. Uh, but typically you want to make sure that you're doing this all completely gradually. You don't want to go too fast or else the driver could stop too abruptly. So just kind of a gradual motion to stop. When directing a vehicle to turn, you should make a windshield wiper movement and point in the direction that the vehicle needs to go. Use your left hand for the left and your right hand for the right. Don't verbally call it out because it could be confusing to the driver as opposed to signaling. Once they have gone far enough in the turn, you can continue backing them up where they need to go. Now once you've parked a vehicle wherever it needs to go, you can kind of give the throat slash cut sign to the driver, and that basically means put it in park and kill the engine. Another thing to note is that most grip and electric trucks have some sort of lift gate system or a ramp, uh, and you want to leave about 10 feet behind any of those trucks just so that there's room to work. When you're all packed up at the end of the day, the spotter can also motion for when the vehicle can leave by standing in front of the vehicle at a safe distance, pointing at the driver, waiting for the driver to acknowledge him, then pointing in the direction that the vehicle needs to go, which is the driver's cue to leave. But typically, that's all there is to it. It's not really hard stuff. It's just hand signaling, uh, and I'm sure that the hand signals probably vary from crew to crew to uh, occupation to occupation, uh, but always make sure to have that little meeting between the driver and the spotter, and you should do fine. But now, a word from our sponsors. Lightbulb Grip is a lighting rental house based out of Brooklyn, New York, and they're dedicated to the education and safety on all film sets. If you have any questions about rigging, on-set safety, or even gear that you've seen in today's episode, you can contact them by heading over to their website at www.lightbulbgrip.com. What, what gear? My hands? And now, finally, it is the 15th, and after all, I did say that I was going to give away two C-stands, so now, we take you there.
So congratulations to you. I will be contacting you very, very soon. As for the rest of you, please don't get discouraged. Like I say, I'm gonna have plenty of more of these giveaways on the way. Um, but uh, if you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below or you can follow me on my Twitter, right now. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you every week right here on Grip Tips.